wanted to thank Dr. Conant, and we have a couple more speakers. Um, in addition to Bill Osmondson, we want to let you know how you can get involved. As you all know, we are up against the machine. We are against 40 years of propaganda. We are against a very well-funded campaign. They have full-time staff, and they're, they're well-paid to do what they do. We're all volunteers. Every contribution will go directly to this campaign in terms of getting signatures and getting out the vote. Please visit our website at cleanwater or cleanwaterportland.org. Get involved, hit the click and uh, get involved button. Donate what you can. We're looking for, uh, we're trying to raise $30,000 to raise, uh, uh, to run an effective campaign. Because we want to do yard signs, we want to do uh, everything that's necessary so that we can defeat this. to point out um, we have an initiative filed and that has to be signed it's not the same petition that is on our website the web uh, the petition on the website is just something that we're going to send to the city hall show them that people do not support this but in order to get this on the ballot we have to have signatures of registered voters and you have to officially sign and fill out your address and we need volunteers to help us get those signatures please uh, please help us because we we need help, we need contributions, we need volunteers. This is going to be a big effort. We have a lot of signatures and, and we could use your support. And uh, without further ado, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Bill Osmondson. Having been a dentist with a master's in public health for 25 years, I promoted water fluoridation. And it was my patients and others who said, Bill, you have to look at the science again yourself. That's what made a big difference. I looked at it myself. One of the first things I did, of course, I, I picked up a toothpaste tube that was a press that was sitting on the hallway, and I read the label, read your label. And I said, well, if we're, if we're not supposed to swallow a, a tiny amount, a pea-sized amount, how much fluoride is in that? Quarter milligram, the same amount of fluoride that they're wanting to put in every glass of Portland water. So if you're supposed to contact the Poison Control Center, the FDA says you're supposed to contact the Poison Control Center over a quarter milligram of fluoride, then the city should make, be making the same statement on the water bill. Contact the Poison Control Center if you drink more than one glass of this water. Paul brought up the, the concept of brains are more important than teeth. I think that's very important to understand. Brains are more important than teeth. I can fix teeth. We can't fix IQ. Now, I have a bunch of slides, about four hours of slides there for Paul's trying to no, know. I don't have those slides. But I wanted to show you some pictures of teeth and my computer isn't going up. I wanted to, to, to do that. But let me give you just a couple illustrations. I have two son-in-laws, one in Bellevue, Washington, fluoridated, one in uh, Lake Oswego, non-fluoridated. I've been helping both of them, and uh, there's just as much decay in both, or just as little decay in both. But I wasn't really as busy as my wife uh, wanted me to be. So uh, she said, I, I want you to do some more work. And I thought, well, this time I want to work with some low-income people. And I found an office in Beaverton, which is fluoridated, where they're low-income. And yes, I'm very busy in Florida at Beaverton and not very busy in Lake Oswego. It doesn't make sense, does it? But that's because fluoridation doesn't really have anything to do with tooth decay. Very, very little. What, what people who are promoting fluoridation are looking at is they get the socioeconomics all mixed up. But compare the rich with the poor. And if the rich have fluoridation, they're going to have less decay, not the poor. Every week, I diagnose dental fluorosis in Beaverton on people, new patients. Many of them live in Portland. Can you tell me why those people who have dental fluorosis, a sign of excess fluoride ingestion, need more fluoride? I mean, if you already have a toxic overdose, why are we give, being giving you more? There's no sense, it makes no sense. If you don't have any teeth, how can it be effective for everyone? So when they start saying this is effective for everyone, 
Some already have dental process, it's not doing them any good. Some don't have teeth, it's not doing them any good. And yes, we do treat dental fluorosis. It's, some people call it a cosmetic damage. But if I went outside to your car and I took a key and I scratched your hood, it's just cosmetic, don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> but it is damage to some people. I know some of your cars, you wouldn't notice the difference, but it would still <laughs> be damage. And, and so what we're looking at on, on tooth damage is saying, yes, but remember this, when they're looking at safety, they're looking at safety to the teeth, not safety to the whole body. Dentists don't diagnose anything other than the mouth. And so when a dentist says it's safe, well, okay, fine. For the teeth, it's relatively safe. Yes, I'd rather do cosmetic dentistry than on a three-year-old with, with decay, which probably doesn't prevent the decay there anyway. So we're looking at, at remembering who's diagnosing what. Dentists diagnose the mouth. They aren't licensed to diagnose anything else. They're not gonna diagnose brains. They're not gonna diagnose thyroid. So when you're looking at the risks, you need to have a bigger picture than just what dentists are looking at. Anyway, there's much more to be said, but the important thing is that we stop fluoridation, importantly.